Mo's Garage. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I got myself a real project on my hands here. Let me tell you what I've got. I've got a customer of mine who would like for me to install this mailbox right here. They would like it approximately 24 by 24, veneered with stone and capped with stone. The engineer has designed a footing that's roughly three foot square by 12 inches thick uh, for this thing to be built on. Uh, the association in which my clients live won't allow that, but what they will allow is this thing to be mounted to a three inch pole or post uh, embedded in approximately 24 to 30 inches of concrete in about a 12 inch footing. So that's what we're gonna do, but there's a little catch to that. We still wanna veneer this thing with stone, so I'm going to build a angle iron frame off of this metal post that's gonna surround this thing all the way up that's going to allow me to bolt some hardy backer board to it uh, and then I can go ahead and veneer it with stone and cap it with stone and the customer ultimately is going to get what, they're, what they originally want and we're also going to satisfy the homeowners association. So with that said, I've been to the metal supply store, I've picked up everything which I think I'm going to need to make this work. So let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is you can see I've turned the mailbox on its side and you can see that they've already provided four holes in the bottom of the box. I've got this quarter inch thick plate that's roughly 12 inches by 16 inches. It's a little, it's a little wide and a little long the plate is, so I'm gonna have to get my plasma cutter. I'm gonna rip about a half inch off of each side of that. And then here's a three inch schedule 40 uh, pipe comb. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and weld that to this plate and then, uh, you know, well, first I'll get the holes drilled in there where I need to so this plate adapts to that, and then we'll weld the pipe on there. Uh, and then on the bottom of this uh, pipe temporarily, I'm going to make a temporary stand out of wood that uh, this thing will be able to stand up on its own so I can build this metal frame around it uh, uh, that would be more convenient than just laying it on the side. So let's go ahead and uh, get the ball rolling. Okay, so we got our mailbox uh, mounted to our seal post right here and welded that quarter inch thick plate on the bottom and got this thing bolted on. Uh, I know that it seems like an awfully tall mailbox, but you gotta remember it's temporarily sitting on a stand because two feet of this is going in the ground and I've got this on this temporary stand so I can have the reasonable height to work around. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is to make an angle iron frame um, that's going to basically be 53 and a half inches or 53 inches tall, uh, 24 inches deep, and about 22 inches wide. I'm going to start by making two frames on each side, and then we'll get some filler pieces to go in between, and then I'll figure out some way to weld brackets to the pole to hold that frame in place. So, with that said, Let's, uh, let's get started. I got a bunch of angle iron right here and let's get to cutting into welding. Okay, so we got our metal cut out for our frame and uh, you know, typically on something like this, it, it, it's going to be a square or rectangular frame and, and typically I would cut these uh, pieces at a 45 um, and then just butt them together. Uh, but on this particular application, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I saw this on another YouTube video, and uh, basically um, what they did is they just cut a piece out of the angle iron right here, and then the next piece of angle iron just kind of slides right in, and you're able to uh, weld that joint up. And so, I don't know, something different. I want to give that a try, so let's get over here and uh, mark this stuff up. 
Oh, okay. Hey, here's something. Um, my buddy Pete stopped by today, and uh, um, I don't know, three or four months ago, I did a video on landscape stake or stem replacement. And, uh, um, you know, these plastic stems, they have a tendency to break. That's what this one did. He dropped these lights off and uh, asked me if I'd uh, make some stems up. So, yeah, that's enough for us. Get this out of the way. Anyways, um, so we're going to mark this up, get these things cut out, and I'll show you how that works welding it together. Okay, got everything all cut out. We're ready to weld this uh, this panel together right here. Um, you got these funny little cuts that uh, you know I've got here instead of the 45s. You've kind of notched the angle iron, and uh, we're gonna put that together. I'll show you how that's gonna work. I got all my clamps. I'm sure I'm gonna need a lot of clamps to do all this. Squares. And my tape measure. My little Craftsman 12 foot tape measure. My go-to tape measure. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm going to show you guys something here. My film editor, Dane, doesn't like when I do this, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to come over here, and I want you guys to take a look at that. Let me focus in if I can a little bit better on that. There's a lot of tape measures right there. You know, we got all those tape measures. And uh, I stay with that little 12 foot craftsman. Oh, Everlast Power Army 205. All right, and let's get this thing back over here. Get it set up. Yeah, let's focus in a little bit here, see if we can get everything good. All right, there we go. Anyways, let's go ahead and get some welding. Let's put this thing together. And, uh, and see how it's all gonna work so we can take the next step. Let's do it. together and uh, grind it out and so the next step is to try to figure out how to assemble them on here and I do everything by myself so this will be a challenge I'll have to do some temporary bracing or something to hold these things into place but uh, anyways they're gonna go something like this yeah this thing fits on here like this and it actually sits out about this far so we got to figure out some way to uh, get it braced off the bottom so I can uh, get some braces on it but uh, it's getting late here tonight so uh, we'll uh, pick it up tomorrow all right let's do it okay everyone well it's Saturday Saturday morning and uh, we're trying to uh, trying to finish this thing up today if I can so I've got the frames uh, I temporarily put some I welded some braces to the bottom to hold the frames in the place where they need to be uh, now it's just a matter of cutting some cross members, some cross pieces in here, getting everything nice and square, um, getting the, the cross pieces where I need them to, to be. Uh, and once that's all squared and everything is right in the perfect place, then I'm going to try to figure out how I'm going to attach the frame to the post. Uh, probably some, uh, some straps going across the bottom, some going across this way. But anyways, we'll get to that. So first thing is first, let's cut these cross members cut and put it in place and we'll go from there.
plate, the mailbox frame, build, whatever you want to call it, is done. And I gotta say, I enjoyed building it. It was uh, quite a challenge for me. Just a little recap. I had uh, built a wood stand for the bottom of this thing during the construction of this, which worked out really well. Everything was just right in front of me as I could build everything in place. Uh, it worked out really good. What we're gonna be doing with this is uh, screwing on some cement type backer board to all four sides and the top and veneering everything with stone, putting a stone cap on it. Uh, this thing will be cemented into the ground. The overall height of this is gonna be 53 inches from ground surface to the top of the mailbox. That's the legal code, I believe, for US Postal Service. And uh, there you go. So it's been a great project for me to build. I hope you enjoyed watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.